my dear sisters and brothers. The word of God you have heard and as you heard, surely something has been evoked in you if you have been present. We are all body, mind and spirit. We have these three levels in us. Depends on which level we are finding ourselves most of the time. We may be at just the body level or the mind level. If it is the mind, then it might be also that you are only at the emotions level, in a way. But if we are living at the spirit level, then the way we look at things changes. We look at life from the spirit perspective. And today it is said that in order for us to look at from the spirit perspective, we have to take away the veil that blocks us from being present to the spirit. Because at the spirit level is the presence of God. Now it could also be our ego presence. That's why when it is ego presence, the sin veil blocks us from being who we want and can be in Jesus. And so we see that when we are blocked, then we do bad things to others, not knowing that it is evil that controls us. And so when evil is controlling the other, what must your response be? Not to react to it, to them, to their words, to their deeds, but to be present to them and make what they are saying present to the Lord. And in this way we will be praying for them. And when we do pray for them, and we pray for ourselves in that way, we begin to give a better response to the other. We will be reconciling them to God, to the others, and bring healing to their life. So now, by the quality of our life, we can be great uh, witnesses and a help to others. Now, we'll take Alice of Sheer Beak. She was a young girl who was given to live in the convent at a very early age. She was only seven when she went to the Cistercian nuns of La Campada. Okay, no, so La Cambra. So she was given there in Belgium and she later joined them. When she joined them, she developed something of a skin disease, we know leprosy. So since she had leprosy, she was segregated. What did she do? She used that to deepen her relationship with Jesus on two levels. One is she was completely humble. Whatever God has given me, I accept it. And she remained silent. So everything she did with silence, Cistercians are known for that. But she also dedicated her life to whatever the community wanted of her to be done. And in this, the sisters found her an example. She was very meek and mild, but always available. Then later on, she developed a, skin, uh, a little more uh, problem. And she continued with that in paralysis and blindness. And then she died at... Uh, 30 years of age. So she was born in 1220 and she died in 1250. So she was canonized and she is the patroness of all those who are paralyzed and who are blind. So when you have uh, her to intercede for you, she will do that. The other one is Germain Cousin. She was born somewhere near Toulouse in France in the year 1579 and she came from a very, uh, her father was a peasant, her mother died when she was very young. Now when her father got married, the other, the stepmother treated her very cruelly, badly and made her sleep with the sheep in the sheep pen. But she, she took it very nicely. She took this uh, bad 
behavior of her stepmother and she developed a deep relationship with Jesus and especially Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and with Mother Mary. So she was given the gift of the presence of Jesus so she would collect all the other children from her village and teach them catechism, the love of God and whatever little she collected from the table which were the leftovers she saw there were other children who were even less fortunate and she would share it with them. And so in this way she became known to the others as very um, favored by God. So what did she do? She offered all her sufferings and whatever she went through for the heretics of the next village. And people started experiencing her uh, sanctity. She died and then a lot of miracles started taking place in her church. Until today, there are pilgrimages going there. You know, France has become very unchristian, though it is a Christian country. But till today, there are people going there in pilgrimage. Her body has remained incorrupt like St. Francis Xavier. You see, these are gone days by. But even today, there are so many among us who are living a good life. They must have gone through different experiences. But they have come back to the Lord because the Lord has touched them. And they are wonderful people who are doing similar things, guided by the Spirit of the Lord, who gives us freedom not to be tied by evil, but to be free to do what God wants to do through us. So let us hold our hands, keep them in our lap, keep our eyes closed and be united to Jesus who is with us. As I said, our strength is in the name of the Lord. As we remain united to him at every breath, as the psalmist tells us, we will experience his power at work in us. And you will experience the miracles that take place in the small measures in our relationship with those we live with, with those we work with, with those we travel with. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us through your presence, which is so alive in us.